Why do the French eat snails? Because they don't like fast food. Today, I'm going to recap a 2023 sport drama film called Big George Foreman. The film begins with George and his kin, who are transitioning into a new abode. Regrettably, the conditions of the house were far from ideal. It lacked a basic amenity like electricity, and the food supply was insufficient to satiate their hunger. Nonetheless, their mother Nancy reiterated the need to express gratitude to God. George, however, harbored doubts about his mother's words as he drifted to sleep. In a conversation with George, Nancy advises him against engaging in physical altercations on his initial day at school due to his anxiety-prone nature. On the following day, George finds himself the center of attention at his new school due to his distinct appearance. His attempt to respond to a teacher's query was promptly silenced. During lunch, he found himself in solitude, without food, while his peers enjoyed their meals. An episode of bullying directed at George incites his rage, resulting in a violent confrontation. When a teacher approaches, George flees the scene. Fast forward several years, George and his companion are seen surveilling a bar. They decide to pursue and rob an intoxicated man exiting the establishment. Unexpectedly, the man turns out to be a law enforcement officer, resulting in a police sting operation. A pursuit ensues with George taking refuge in sewage pipes. Upon the arrival of the police and a sniffer dog, George camouflaged himself with sewage to evade detection. His plan succeeds, leaving the police clueless about his whereabouts. On his journey home, George stumbles upon an institution that offers complimentary meals and beverages. Interestingly, this establishment also nurtures and hones one's talents, expecting work in exchange. Upon relaying this information to his mother, he expresses his intention to venture to this institution. She provides him with her blessing and support. George proceeds to the institution the next day, where he is presented with the official uniform. He is briefed about the rules of the place by the guard. In his room, he notices the new shoes purchased by his mother. An individual named Desmond was engaged in playing music, which hurt George, leading him to switch off the tunes. At lunchtime, George is taken aback to discover his shoes missing, having been pilfered. He spots the thief donning his stolen footwear in the cafeteria. Infuriated, he chases after the thief who retreats into a room, locking the door behind him. Overcome with rage, George breaks down the door and attacks the thief, almost hurling him out of a window. Their fight is interrupted by Duck, who is taken aback by the sight of the damaged door. Duck escorts him in his vehicle. Armed with knowledge about George's past involvement in three separate fights, leading to his disqualification. Although Duck provides him with ticket money, George pleads persistently, emphasizing that this institution was his final refuge and he couldn't bear the shame of returning home defeated. Promptly, Duck empathizes with George's plight and brings him back to the institution. He expresses his observation about George's apparent strength and invites him to become a member of the club. It's then revealed that Doc serves as the coach of the club. Agreeing to this proposition, George steps into the gym and grapples with another member, but is unsuccessful. Despite being the subject of ridicule from others, Doc remains unwavering in his guidance. In a fit of anger, George punches a bag, knocking it to the ground, an act that leaves everyone astonished by his power. Doc devotes himself to training George in the gym, encouraging him all the way. George makes a call to his mother, informing her of his new involvement in boxing. She urges him to avoid physical conflicts, to which he explains that boxing is merely a sport with its own set of rules. In the subsequent scene, George confronts a previous acquaintance, lands a punch on him, and causes him to topple over. This display of prowess leaves Doc impressed. Feeling more confident, George approaches Doc with the desire to participate in boxing matches. Doc, however, reminds him that he is still a novice and needs to train further. George inquires about the upcoming tournament and learns that it will take place a year later, but he may not be able to compete due to his ongoing training. Fast forward a year, we see George contending in the tournament against a formidable Russian boxer. His family watches the spectacle unfold on television, their hearts swelling with pride. As the match commences, the crowd erupts in cheers for George. Following multiple successful strikes on his adversary, George clinches the gold medal with ease. 
Elated, he raises the flag of the United States. His family is dumbfounded as they witness their brother winning his first gold medal at the mere age of 19. The subsequent day, George proudly adorns his gold medal as he mingles with his friends. They question his decision to hoist the American flag given the country's ill treatment of African Americans. Frustrated, he retreats to his mother, who provides him with solace. He shares his plans of competing in an airport tournament. A stunning girl named Paula captures his interest, leading him to initiate a conversation and successfully acquire her phone number. Later, we see George with Doc, who introduces him to professional trainers, Sadler and Coach Moore. George observes Sonny, a champion belt holder, practicing with them. Following his training session, George contacts Paula. They get acquainted and eventually develop affection for each other. George competes in several qualifying matches, emerging victorious in all, catapulting him to fame. He then resolves to marry Paula. Finally, he manages to advance to the final round. His opponent is a professional boxer who had triumphed over Muhammad Ali just two years prior. The general consensus predicted an effortless victory over George. The crowd's chants resonated with the name of the opposing contender. As the bout kicked off, George found himself recalling the wise counsel of his coaches. He was caught off guard by a sudden hit from his adversary. However, George retaliated, landing a powerful punch that sent his opponent to the canvas. The spectators were stunned by George's show of force. As the second round commenced, George dictated the pace, unleashing the series of blows. He then managed to land a hit that floored his opponent once more. In the end, the championship was undeniably George's triumph. Doc couldn't help but express his joy, knowing he had always foreseen the hero George would become. Fame soon followed George's victory. He appointed Desmond as his manager due to Desmond's proficiency in mathematics and a mutual agreement was made. George caught news of Muhammad Ali publicly ridiculing him, even boasting to the presenter about his plans to face and defeat George in the future. George decides to treat his family to a grand house, where they rejoice over his accomplishments. Though he fathered a child, his attention to his wife was lacking. He learns of his sister, Mary's, pregnancy. His increasing fan attention led to friction between him and his wife, who expressed her dissatisfaction over his change in attitude. George embarks on a journey to compete in a major tournament against Muhammad Ali. Anticipation for his arrival was palpable. He noticed Muhammad Ali deriding him in public, yet he chose to remain quiet. Many believed that George would overcome Muhammad Ali due to his superior strength. During the match, George opted to compete in his unique manner, without the guidance of his coaches. He started off in control, but his overconfidence and pride led to a lapse in concentration. This shift gave Muhammad Ali the upper hand. Doc was frustrated watching George losing focus and resorting to aimless punches. Ultimately, the match concluded with a victory for Muhammad Ali, a result that left everyone in disbelief. In the aftermath, his wife conveyed her intentions to end their marriage during a family discussion. He later visits his mother, who questions him about his expulsion from the competition. He confesses that his overconfidence was the root of his downfall and takes responsibility for his defeat. In a bid to reassert his strength, he decides to engage in a boxing match against five fighters consecutively. Muhammad Ali was among the spectators, resorting to his usual mockery of George. George challenges him to a rematch, but Muhammad Ali dismisses him, claiming he doesn't fight with losers. George later meets with Doc, where it's revealed that George had suffered another defeat. Doc offers advice to help George regain his former self. An urgent message summons him to the hospital, as his sister Mary is on the verge of childbirth, but her baby's life is at risk. His mother urges everyone to offer their prayers. Overwhelmed with remorse and despair, he steps out to fervently pray. He makes a desperate plea to God, offering his own life in exchange for his sister's unborn child. Following a brief interlude, we see Mary with her newborn baby, both looking hale and hearty. The medical staff were astounded at the infant's survival. She assured George that she was aware of his heartfelt prayers and affirmed that his prayers had indeed been answered. With time, George found himself back in the ring, but he was evidently distracted. 
Whispers circulated, speculating that George's performance had declined since his defeat against Muhammad Ali. Indeed, he ended up losing this match too. Doc found himself at a loss, unsure of how to manage George's situation. He became irate, demanded silence, and suddenly lost consciousness. Though he was on the brink of death, he managed to pull through. Doc informed him about their assumption of his demise. His near-death experience ignited a newfound sense of faith in him. He visited a church and shared his experiences, emphasizing the importance of faith in God. He resolved to retire from boxing and commit his life to God, the church, and the pursuit of priesthood. Upon exiting the church, he broke the news of his retirement to Doc, who was taken aback. Despite Doc's attempt to persuade him to return to the ring, George stood firm in his decision. He then approached Muhammad Ali and they reconciled, establishing a bond of friendship. Subsequently, he apologized to his wife. While she accepted his apology, she declined to reunite with him. At the church, he noticed a woman and was smitten by her. Taking the stage in front of the church congregation, he offered guidance to his fellow members. He later met with Joan, the woman he had noticed earlier, and engaged in conversation with her. He showed her an abandoned church, which he decided to restore and reopen. A decade later, he had established himself as a pastor, imparting wisdom to his congregation. A mother approached him, requesting him to coach her son in boxing, but he declined. We later see him with his wife, Joan, and their children. The news revealed a story about the boy whom he had refused to train, now embroiled in a theft accusation. Filled with regret for not agreeing to coach the young lad, he decided to reopen an old gymnasium. Desmond, who seemed somewhat uneasy, accompanied him. After investing considerable amounts of money in refurbishing the place, it started attracting young enthusiasts for training. Suddenly, the electricity was cut off due to unpaid bills. Upon visiting the bank, he was shocked to find his account balance at zero. Failure to repay the debt would result in the closure of his gym, all thanks to Desmond who had deceitfully squandered the funds by gambling. He confronted Desmond, dealt him a blow, but ultimately let him be. Desperate to generate funds for the gym, he resolved to participate in advertisements. Despite his efforts, his wife informed him that they had barely collected half of the required amount. Left with no other alternative, he reluctantly decided to return to boxing. Even though Joan opposed the idea initially, he managed to persuade her. He then approaches Doc with the intention to return to boxing. Doc cautions him about the challenges of making a comeback due to his age and physical condition. Yet, George remained resolute. Doc recommended that he shed some weight and agreed to resume coaching him. George committed himself to an intensive daily training regimen and successfully attained his ideal weight. Consequently, he began his training sessions with Doc. He stepped into the ring once again and surprisingly emerged victorious. This extraordinary feat became the talk of the town, and he started appearing on various television shows. Next came the Golden Bell Championship. Although he did not win, he was greeted with cheers and applause from the audience. His endeavors had started paying off. The advertising gigs and matches he participated in enabled him to earn substantial money. He went to the bank and managed to clear all his debts. Following this, he engaged in another match against a different champion. His opponent was younger, but George's experience proved to be his advantage. With a decisive punch, he was able to bring down his opponent. People were astonished by George's accomplishment of becoming a boxing champion in spite of his advanced age. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.